I want to welcome all of you to the zoo on this beautiful day today to celebrate a major environmental milestone for the city and county of Denver, one which Denver Zoo is proud to be a partner. Uh, you know, Denver Zoo as a conservation organization isn't just about animals. We believe it's important that as a conservation organization, we serve as a leader in environmental practices among the cultural and business community. We also feel it's important that we continually work to improve. And then lastly, it's important to share what we know and share what we know with others so they can improve as well. You know, ultimately, if we're to achieve Denver Zoo's vision of making a better world for animals, we have to make a better world for people, too, because people and animals depend on one another for their future. So we're lucky to be in Denver, where we have a community that supports businesses and organizations working to improve our business practices and reduce our impact on the environment. Much of that credit really goes to Mir Hickenlooper, who challenges and encourages us to find better ways, to think boldly about big ways that we can soften our footsteps on our local environment. So we're very pleased to have Mayor Hickenlooper here with us today. And Gidget has a special way that she likes to welcome people that she likes. So please join me in welcoming Mayor John Hickenlooper as Gidget welcomes him as well. on breath, uh, but, but very sweet nonetheless, and it is very exciting to be here. Uh, you know, William Ruckelshaus, a former head of the EPA, said that nature provides us a free lunch, but only if we control our appetites. And what we're talking about here today is making sure that we do control our appetites and we look at how can we create systems that are sustainable in all aspects of our city government. Uh, what we're announcing today is that Denver is now the first city uh, to voluntarily comply and become ISO 14001 uh, compliant, uh, which is an environmental management system that, that really demonstrates a comprehensive integration of all your programs of, of energy conservation uh, and environmental management. Uh, and I'm delighted to say that the uh, Denver Zoo is the first zoo in America to be ISO 14, 14001. Isn't that pretty amazing, Gidget? <laughs> um, and I think what we're talking about here is, is recognizing that a system like ISO 14001 allows us not only to control our environmental impact, but also to make sure that we, we spend less money and we also reevaluate and constantly improve our business system. So in the end, we make sure that we're constantly kind of walking our talk, right? Or, or just doing what we should. <laughs> uh, anyway, we are uh, very proud to have the zoo. We recognize that we have one of the greatest zoos in America, uh, that this is a, a remarkable attraction, certainly in this economy. It's a, a wonderful opportunity for families to get out, and uh, on a day like today, you really do realize why it's such a privilege to live in Denver where we have weather like this and a facility like this zoo. Uh, and, and wonderful animals like Gidget, right? <laughs> no. uh, so anyway, I want to thank you all for coming out. Uh, I want to recognize uh, both the zoo, uh, uh, Nancy Severson, who runs our uh, Office of, uh, of Environmental Management, uh, and also all the different agencies that have already become compliant with our uh, ISO 14001, which is now I've got my list so I make sure I don't miss anyone. The worst thing a mayor can do is leave out one of the agencies. Uh, that we're in. Uh, in addition to environmental health, environmental management, environmental health, uh, public works, general services, theaters and arenas, uh, and the mayor's office, uh, and they all have already made that their those agencies compliant. Uh, and in the next period of time, next year, we're going to work towards getting uh, nine additional agencies also in compliance with 14,001. Ultimately, we're going to have the entire city uh, held to this very high environmental standard. So thanks for all coming. Uh, and we'll make sure that we continue to uh, improve our environmental management and, and recycle on every, every chance we can get. 
Gidget wants to remind everybody that we all play a part in uh, our environmental activities every day. And she likes to contribute in one easy technique, and she's going to demonstrate that for you. She loves to recycle. shot but her collection's great and we're <laughs> firm supporters in Denver Recycles and all the animals at the five. zoo are too. about this ISO 14001? I mean, yeah, uh, uh, what ISO 14001, we first started working with it at the airport a couple years ago, and it's a, a system of uh, environmental management uh, which is based on continuous improvement. And so what you're looking at is, the primary concern is, is the environmental impact that your operations may have on the immediate vicinity but long term on the broader community. So you look at things, everything from uh, how you uh, uh, burn fuel to how you store maybe chemicals or uh, other supplies. How do you make sure a workplace is clean and safe? I mean, it really is a very broad template. And what it allows, once you've got all your employees paying attention to it and, and really focusing on what their activity is, uh, it, it creates a consciousness that, that naturally improves people's approach to their jobs. And what are some of the recent changes the zoo has made to comply with that? Say that again? Some of the changes the zoo has made to comply with that. Well, the zoo has done a number of things. One of the keys is to put, build the system. As the mayor said, the whole idea is you develop a strategy to identify areas you can improve, set the course on how you're going to do that, and then measure your success, and then continually improve. A few things that we've done in the last few years. Um, uh, this is a good place to be. We're a large user of water, but in the last 10 years, the zoo has cut our water usage over 50%. We went from over 300 million gallons a year to less than 150 million gallons a year. Um, doing things like looking at all of our purchasing, and are we buying products that are locally produced, locally available, you know, and, and, and not being transported across the world where you're using more energy to get those things. So environmental practices in our purchasing. We provide eco-passes through RTD for all of our employees to encourage alternative transportation use. Uh, one of our biggest initiatives that we're very excited about, our next major exhibit project, Asian Tropics, we've been developing a system called gasification. And it's not a, fan, a fun word, but the idea is truly exciting and innovative. We will be able to utilize 90% of the zoo's entire waste stream, animal waste, trash from our visitors, our own operations, and keep it right here on property, convert it into energy that will be utilized to operate that facility. For us, we estimate it will reduce um, co our contributions to local landfills by 1.5 million pounds per year. And what's also exciting to us is that's a technology that's transferable to almost any business um, in the country, not just a zoo, and it's something we really look forward to build as a model that we then can share with others. So those are, those are just a few examples. So I think it's another great example of why this zoo is different than other zoos, right? That approach to innovation, realize you're not just talking about zoos, but you're talking about how everybody deals with their waste and, and what are the ways you can be more environmentally sensitive. And, and again, as I said sort of in the beginning, or I meant to say, when you begin focusing on environmental impacts, you almost always save money. Right, just by paying attention to how you're using resources and how you approach the day-to-day -day -day business of your life, uh, you almost always find ways to cut costs. Okay. Anything else? I almost want to take my coat off and go swimming. <laughs>